Hey everybody, welcome back. As promised, uh, this is part two of the uh, CB1100F um, restoration, full frame off restoration. So today I'm going to, uh, this video is going to be featuring the entire teardown of the bike down to the bare frame. So it's a little bit longer than normal, probably about 30 minutes, but um, it's uh, pretty interesting. I mean, I'm going to be tearing the entire bike down to bare frame. So um, I'm just kind of doing a little walk around here showing the bike as, as uh, I get started. Now what I do is, you know, a lot of people put the parts in um, Ziploc bags, but you know, I go to Home Depot or um, uh, Harbor Freight and I buy these uh, uh, storage bins and then I also get a, uh, a large um, toolbox and I put all of the parts from the one bike in these um, containers and then that way I can uh, store them and then I have every single nut and bolt and uh, part that came off the bike uh, stored in one place. Then if you, if you want, you can label the bins with uh, blue tape and a marker like I did here. If you put all the nuts and bolts for the battery box, as for instance, uh, and then you shut the lid and you can look, you know, you can look in there and see exactly what they are. And then um, you can stack them away and it's really a good system, I think. So anyway, I'm going to get started here and... Um, starting off by cleaning the bike up a little bit. It's pretty dirty. I was going to pull it outside and wash it, but I didn't want all the water dripping all over the place. So I just did a real quick uh, wipe down here. And then I'm going to get started. And a lot of the video is going to be, um, you know, in sped up form because, I mean, it literally took hours to do this, but uh, I think you'll get the gist of what I'm doing, and I'm going to try to uh, catch every single uh, aspect of the teardown. So, um, you know, I'm going to just kind of pipe in a little bit here and there. I, I won't be talking during the entire thing, but I'll just pipe in a couple times here and there as I as the video progresses. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just put some of the parts down on the floor as I'm as I'm disassembling it. But mostly I try to take each and every part that I disassemble and I go and I put it in the bins so that it, it cuts down the the job after the bike is all apart because tearing a bike apart or a car for that matter is kind of like digging a hole you know you can you can dig a 12 12 inch by 12 inch hole and have a pile that's 36 inches square so it always it always seems to uh the bike always seems to take up a lot more room than it did when it was all together so i try to put most of the stuff away in the bins as i go and you'll notice that during the video here, I'll, I'll walk away and then come back. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just kind of putting the things away. So again, I'm, I'll try not to skip over too many things. I, I'm kind of going through the entire bike disassembly process uh, so that you kind of get a gist of what, what's involved. So the first thing I do is I try to get the uh, wire harness out of the bike so that it's not in your way because as you disassemble it, it, it kind of gets in the way. And by the way, each, like I'm doing here, each assembly that I disassemble, I try to put the nuts and bolts back where they came from. Uh, that way you kind of know where, where they go. And if you have new ones to replace it with, it's easy to compare them and uh, and then they all go back in the right place. So it's that's one way of not having to uh, think about it too too much. Just like the headlight there, I put the bolts back where it belong where they belong. The wire harness is is really 
kind of kind of a pain because all the plugs are very uh, tightly connected and then over the years they they may get corroded and a little bit tough to undo and on the 1100F they're they're kind of attached to the frame unlike earlier bikes where they're all inside the headlight and it's real easy but on this uh, there it's kind of the wire harness is kind of all wrapped around the the uh, the headlight bracket, the headlight instrument cluster bracket. It's a little little tough. By the way, when the bike went down, the headlight fairing instrument cluster bracket that I'm that I'm getting off the bike now was pretty heavily damaged, so I'm probably going to end up replacing it so I'll show you that in a minute it's pretty damaged and by the way here I'm taking the aftermarket turn signals off and uh, the good old splicing no 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 you don't want to splice wire harnesses as soon as wire harness splice it's no good in my opinion it's kind of a pet peeve of mine I, I hate wire harnesses that are cut up and spliced together. So as the video progresses here, uh, again, I'll be removing all this stuff. And then uh, here's the uh, headlight bracket like I was explaining before, and you'll see it's pretty heavily damaged. You got, you got a bend right here right here it's the whole thing's kind of tweaked so these are these are really tough to get back straight again because if they aren't perfectly straight the fairing looks crooked on the bike and nothing lines up so I'm just gonna end up replacing it and I don't really have any particular order that I disassemble the bike. I just kind of go along as I go. Uh, the, 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 the goal is to get it down to just the frame, the engine, and the front fork assembly. Everything else is incidentals that there really is no particular, uh, you know, particular order that it should come apart as long as you end up with a frame and engine and a front fork assembly. You'll see that as as the video progresses. Here's another pet peeve of mine that all these old bikes seem to have. People love zip ties, but I hate them. Now, Honda makes their own tie, which if you're going to restore a bike, use the original OEM ties. They're designed to do what a zip tie does, and they look a lot nicer. Again, there may be some quiet moments here, but I'm just going to let the video speak for itself. Another tough assembly is the battery box, air box assemblies. Here's the air box. I'll be able to restore this one. And then next is the battery box assembly. And like the headlight bracket, it's got all the wire harness and pretty much the whole electrical system uh, is all kind of congregated around that battery box as you well know.
And again, as I've noticed, or as I've mentioned in other videos, if you'll notice, I use mostly hand tools. I don't use any power tools on any of these bikes. I'll use power tools on, on my car restorations uh, because, you know, you're just looking at much bigger, tougher attachments and assemblies on a car. But on a bike, I just use hand tools. I, I kind of stay away from power tools because there are a lot of aluminum parts on bikes. And as I've mentioned in other videos, you, you really have to be careful not to strip the threads when you're disassembling it. A lot of people will think, you know, of, of stripping threads when you're assembling it, but you can strip them uh, taking things apart as well. And when they're old, rusty, crusty, corroded parts like these old bikes have, you can pull the threads right out along with the bolt. And when you're using a power tool, the you just you don't have the same feel for it as you do when you're doing it by hand. If a if a bolt is really tough to unscrew, then you know to lubricate it with some WD-40 and you might save the threads by doing that. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of things here where I'm sure people will look at me and say, why didn't you use a power tool to do that? And that's why I always use hand tools to take apart a bike and also to put it back together again. And here's one of the crash bars that saved the bike. That's no good. It did its job. I also use, uh, you know, six-sided sockets, um, you know, rather than the than the twelve-point sockets. I use the six points instead of the twelve-point, especially on these old bikes where a lot of the bolts are frozen and and you don't want to strip the the head on the bolt so I always try to use the six point sockets as much as I can. The most common thing when you're taking an old bike apart is stripping the threads and stripping the the bolt heads. And by the way on uh, these are all the motor mounts and when I as I take them apart I put them back together again in the order that all the the bolts and washers and uh, uh, spacers and nuts and all that. I put them back together in the order that they came. That way, again, you don't even have to think about it when you're putting the bike back together again. And I've done so many of these now that I know it all by heart, but it's still, at least the visual is a good reminder you know, if it's been months or a couple of years that you've worked on a particular bike, it's just a good reminder. Plus, then you don't end up with nuts and bolts and washers and nuts and, and clips and all that all over the place. These grab bars are the wrong ones for 1100F, of course, as you saw. They're chrome, and they're supposed to be black chrome. These rear shocks, I'll restore those as well. They don't leak, um, but I'll restore those to look like new again. That, that back brake caliper 
was just totally frozen on the disc, so that's why I had to knock it off with a rubber mallet. That back fender portion kind of skipped forward a little bit because they had some really funky nuts on there and attachments, and it took me quite a while to get the taillight off of the rear fender. So there went the battery box, and now I can uh, remove most of the wire harnesses and all the drain tubes and all that. Once that battery box is out of there, you're almost... You're almost home. That swing arm will look like new when I'm done with it. So now I'm down to the the exhaust, which I like to take the exhaust off almost last because then I can just drop it down like I did and the whole thing comes down in one piece. And I'm just really lucky I've got a nice, beautiful NOS exhaust system because this exhaust is just completely wasted. I mean, the rust is just so bad. I'm, I'm surprised it hasn't rusted through. It's unfortunate, but I'm not going to be able to use that again. So just getting the last bit of assembly off the bike now and then I can remove the wire harness and then I'm down to just the frame and the engine and the front end. And here we have the wire harness. Now, this wire harness is really not that bad. There is only one little thing that was cut, and that was for those funky turning signals. And I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that wire harness or not. If I do, I'll restore it to look like new again, but I'll, uh, I'll readdress that at the time. So at this point, I'm removing the uh, triple clamp at the top. And then I'll be able to remove the front fork assembly easily. So now I'm going to be focusing on the, the rest of the motor mounts. I've got the front ones off. So the only ones that are left now are the bottom and the rear motor mounts. And like I mentioned before, I, I always put the, the bolt assemblies for the motor mounts back together in the order that they came off the bike. So again, I don't have to think about it at the time that I put the bike back together again. And when I go to restore these pieces, then I'll know what order they go into. So at this point, I have everything apart down to the frame, the engine, and the front fork assembly. And as you can see, the engine is pretty much ready to come out. Now, on the on the F bikes, that bottom right uh, hand portion of the frame comes off the bike to make it much easier to get the engine out. So now I got a big fat mess to clean up, and I will clean it in one, two, three. And now I'll be ready to put the motorcycle lift under the bike. I'm just removing the front brakes real quick here to get those out of the way.
and to reduce the weight of the front end when I take it apart. So then you just get the motorcycle lift and you place it under there. You need a couple of wood blocks to kind of stabilize the engine on the motorcycle lift. Then you kind of raise it up to a point where it's supporting the engine securely. And then with a few little adjustments and wiggles and stuff like that, you just kind of like grab the frame and move it away from the engine. Just like that. Looks a lot easier than it actually is. I struggled with it for maybe 20 minutes before I got the engine out, so not quite as easy as I make it look. And I didn't realize it, but I didn't have the camera running when I took the front end off, so sorry about that. But uh, basically, you just kind of take the those remaining head uh, the uh, triple tree bolts off, and then the front end just slips right out from from the frame. So at this point, I'm pretty much done uh, taking the bike apart. Um, that last bit there, I was taking the uh, center stand off. But uh, as you can see here, now the frame is down to bare nothing so the only thing I have left to do really is to remove the uh, the VIN tag which I will or I actually covered that on a previous video um, in the very beginning of my video series but uh, here's the engine here and my next video I will be focusing on the engine I'll be tearing it down and like I said I'm gonna uh, have the head rebuilt and probably put rings in it too so and then uh, here is my part stash over here in my bins so as you can see I just kind of put them away in the order that that I am comfortable with and so now I'll stash these away and uh, pull them out as I need to restore each one of these pieces or replace them with new ones or you know NOS ones or whatever but at least now everything's well organized and it's nice and neat and tidy so uh, that's gonna pretty much do it for this video uh, so we've gotten a lot accomplished today we got the bike completely apart now I can send all the the frame and and all the major black parts out to have them powder coated and uh, and then like I said on the next video for this for the 1100F, I'll be focusing on tearing the engine down and, and focusing on that. So, uh, again, as usual, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.